ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुरिन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री कृष्ण सेस जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्या मे वंग्यो वेति तत्वतः चक्द्वा देहं पुनर्जन्म नैतिमाम एति सर्जन एनी वन हु knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not take birth again in this world but uh, returns to me so krishna uh, his birth is extraordinary and his activities are extraordinary because he is extraordinary hearing about krishna revives our dormant krishna consciousness we should not think that krishna is an ordinary person or that no such person as krishna ever existed there is much wrong information about krishna broadcast in the world today but the actual fact is that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead that means that he is the source of everything everything rests on his energy His very name Krishna means that he is all attractive. Here on this earth planet in this Kali Yuga people are becoming more and more sinful and many people do not care for Krishna. Some people are even so sinful that they blaspheme Krishna. But the great demigods they are not so foolish. Yang Brahma Varunendra Rudra Maruta Stunvanti Divyai Stavaihi all the great demigods they offer prayers to Krishna they glorify Krishna Brahma Varuna Indra the Maruts uh, Rudra they all offer prayers to Krishna that is the uh, proper thing to do we are all by nature part and parcel of Krishna We do not belong in this material world. In this material world, we are simply struggling to exist, but no one is happy. And increasingly in the modern world, people are suffering. They have no friendship, they have no love with anyone. Sometime I go I visited Helsinki, which is the capital of Finland. The the name of the place is Hell Sinki which means it's just like hell and it's sinking down even further so uh i was lodged in one apartment close to our temple there it was a rented apartment in a very big apartment building and the apartment was just one small room and on one side there was another tiny little room called a kitchenette not for cooking anything but just if someone wants to heat some coffee something like that and on the other side was the bathroom and toilet very small and the whole building huge building was full of these tiny apartments just meant for people to live alone and food they will take in some cafe and they live alone no family no friends just they go to work they come back and they spend their whole life like that and they prefer to live like that they think no family no bother just i live by myself that means they don't even want to have any friends they've become so empty in their heart and we see that even people who do live in the family there even among the family members there's always some misunderstanding this is this is typical of kali yoga but actually our heart should be full of love full of love for krishna krishna comes to this world just to remind us that we are all meant for loving him we just saw the beautiful drama of bilva mangala he is one of many many persons who in the past have run to vrindavan to give their soul to krishna so it's not that we can all leave what we're doing and run to krishna but that spirit should be there to understand 
that uh, I am meant for Krishna. Amitu toma tumito ama ki karja oper operadhanu. This Bhakti Nautako says, he sings to Krishna, I am yours, you are mine. What need do we have of other people's money and talk of so many things? So that spirit can be there for everyone. We have to live in this world somehow or other. In the modern age, almost everyone is struggling. Even in the so-called rich countries of the world, people are feeling economic difficulty. And here in India, most people are working very hard just to meet their basic expenses. Everyone is leading a very difficult life. But we simply want to uh, bring to your attention that actual happy life is possible even in this very difficult age that we live in today. Actual happy life means with Krishna. There is no happiness without Krishna consciousness. Whatever we may do to try to be happy, we cannot be happy without Krishna. Just this simple point we should understand. If you have crores of rupees, that will not make you happy. Only Krishna can fill our heart. So, uh, everyone can practice Krishna consciousness. We see here young boys are practicing. Even from the very beginning of life, one can take up Krishna consciousness very seriously. And that is recommended by Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad was famous that from the beginning of life, he was fully Krishna conscious. And Prahlad, he recommended, Kaumara Acharet Pragyo Dharaman Bhagavataniha Durlabang Manusha Janma Tadapi Adhruvam Arthadam He said that Krishna consciousness should be taken up from the very beginning of life. Someone who is very intelligent, they will take up Krishna consciousness from the beginning of life. Now we may say, well, I can wait until I'm 99 years old, then I will do Krishna, then I will practice Krishna consciousness. But Prahlad says that this human life is very rare and it is unreliable. There's no guarantee that we will live till tomorrow, any of us. Mm. What is that? Nishvasa naiva nishvasa naiva kartavyam kadarudhoba vishyati That when we breathe in, there's no guarantee that we will again breathe out. Not only is there no guarantee that we will not see tomorrow, there's no guarantee that we will be alive even in 20 seconds from now. Anything can happen at any time. But actually when we're hearing Krishna Katha, we are protected. But when we're going around our daily activities, then we may pass away any time. And even if we do live a long life, say we live to 90 years old, still we don't have very much time. Prahlad Maharaj analyzes that we, uh, we start off our life within the womb, completely in ignorance. In the first few years in childhood, we're simply playing. Then we become very serious about study. Then we're working very hard for most of our life. And in old age, we're simply suffering. As old age comes, gradually we can't see properly. We can't hear properly. We can't digest properly. We can't walk properly. This way, our whole life passes away. So much time goes in sleeping. So much time goes in sickness. And in this way, we are diverted from the actual purpose of life. So in the midst of all these distractions, we should understand that human life is very valuable. Because only in human life can we perform bhakti yoga. We can act in such a manner that we can revive our love for Krishna. And by reviving our love for Krishna, we go to Krishna in the spiritual world. We don't have to take birth again in this material world. 
So just try to understand what a serious position we are in. We have passed through many, many, many births. We have been at some time a fish, a dog, a cat, Indra, Brahma, a worm in stool. There are 84 lakh species of life. And if we don't utilize this human form of life for taking to Krishna consciousness, then we have to take birth again. Then again, we have to take birth as a cat, as a dog, as a fish, as a mouse, as an insect, and so on. So, we are meant for loving Krishna. In this material world, there is no love. Whatever goes on in the name of love is only a perverted reflection of our original love for Krishna. Whatever goes on in this world in the name of love is just a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of the soul's need, the soul's desire for pure, for pure love of Krishna. So, uh, whatever activities we may perform in this world, we should uh, act in such a way that our dormant love for Krishna is revived. Whatever you are doing, make Krishna the center of your life. If you're an auto rickshaw driver, you can suggest to your passengers, why don't you go to the ISKCON temple? If you're a businessman, well, there's some taste in earning money. We see that businessmen, they like to earn more and more money. Even if they don't need the money, they take pleasure in earning money. But after some time, that becomes boring. There, there's no real taste in that. So, uh, you can earn money and offer that in Krishna's service. If you like to earn lakhs and lakhs of rupees, do it, offer it to Krishna. I see there are several members of the business community here. So we are quite shameless and we will tell you that you can give all your money to us. And if you do, we won't keep one paisa for ourselves. We sleep on the floor, we take simple Krishna prasadam, but we want to build a big and beautiful temple for Krishna. If you give crores and crores of rupees, we will continue to sleep on the floor and we will make big and beautiful temple for Krishna. And we will invite all the people to come and chant Hare Krishna and take Krishna prasadam and everyone will be happy. So that is our program. Sarve Sukhino Bhavantu. Let, ev let everyone be happy. Maybe you know there was a great devotee uh, in Andhra Pradesh. What is nowadays called Andhra Pradesh? Actually, I think that's going in Talangana. But anyway, it's still Andhra Pradesh. So uh, he, was the, he was a great devotee of Ramachandra Bhagavan. And he was uh, the minister of the Nizam. So nowadays, uh, in the news, there's a lot of talk about the corrupt ministers. So uh, this minister of the Nizam, he was also corrupt. And he took all the money of the Nizam and built a beautiful temple for Lord Rama. So when the Nizam found out, he became very angry. And uh, he arrested that minister and said, you have to stay in prison until you give all the money back. So that Nizam, at night, uh, two men came to see him. One was, uh, they're both very big, strong Kshatriyas. One was very dark-bodied, and the other was very light-skinned. And they said that, here, you take this money, what all the money that is owed, and you let my devotee out of, let our devotee out of the prison. Ram and Lakshman, Ram is very dark, Lakshman is very light. So they personally came to pay off the debt which the minister had swindled from the uh, treasury. So uh, the point is, yeah, that temple is there still at Bhadrachalam, that's in Andhra Pradesh. So the point is that everything should be used for Krishna, even at great risk. Krishna, Rama, 
they are the same supreme personality of Godhead. Those uh, who are great devotees of Krishna and Rama, they will do everything for the sake of the Lord. Just like we saw the drama that Bilva Mangala Thakur, he thought that because of my eyes, I am attracted to beautiful women. Therefore, let me put out my eyes so that I will not be disturbed in my bhakti. Nowadays, everyone is going to the cinema to look at the beautiful women. But Bilva Mangal, he thought that by being attracted to beautiful women, my Krishna bhakti will be spoiled. So we see that in the modern age, people are becoming more and more lusty. But they are not happy. So we are telling them, don't go to the cinema, go to the temple. And if you want to see beauty, see the beauty of Radha and Krishna. See the beauty of Sita and Rama. But we should come before Radha and Krishna, before Sita and Ram, in a spirit of service. If we are charmed by the beauty of Krishna, then we shall not be charmed by the a meaningless beauty of this material world. However beautiful a woman may be, within a few years her body will become dried up and ugly. But Krishna's beauty never diminishes. Krishna is always young, even though he's the oldest person, because his form is Satchit Ananda Vigraha. It's yeah. a fully spiritual form. Krishna's form is eternal. It never deteriorates. So, uh, yes, we're inviting everyone. Please come. Make Krishna the center of your life. You will be fully satisfied. There is one uh, businessman in this city, Mr. Lakshmi Chand. So he's very good at doing business. But he feels that simply to do business, it is not enough. Some years ago, he visited Vrindavan, the place of Krishna's pastimes, which is theoretically in UP, but actually it's completely part of the spiritual world. So he thought, seeing so many temples of Krishna there, that we should have one magnificent temple of Krishna here in Salem. So he's going on doing his business. But his actual happiness is in seeing this temple come up. So we invite you all, take happy, be, be happy in serving Krishna. This temple is simply meant so that everyone can come here and be happy in the service of Krishna. There are many, many temples in India. This temple we are building not simply for darshan, but also to teach people, to teach people the message of Bhagavad Gita, to teach people how they can live happily in this world by being always Krishna conscious. So we uh, pray that these festivals may expand more and more. Every day in Krishna Bhakti is a festival. And we expect when this temple is built, that every day several thousand people will be visiting it. So it will be just like a festival every day. But this, these festivals, just like we have Janmashtami festival, Ramanavami festival, these festivals should expand more and more and more. Now some several thousands of people are attending. But we pray for the day when the whole city of Salem is celebrating this Janmashtami festival. All the surrounding district, everyone will be fully absorbed in love of Krishna. So please uh, join with us. This temple is not our temple, it's Krishna's temple. It's your temple to come here and serve Krishna. So we hope to see you all again more and more. And uh, everyone becoming more and more happy in the service of Krishna. Modern life is full of... Uh, struggle, no love, but life in Krishna consciousness is Kevala Ananda, simply bliss. So uh, next we will perform the Abhishekam and 
Midnight is the time of Krishna's appearance. So uh, those devotees who are observing this Janmashtami festival very seriously, they are fasting and after midnight they may take some little light prasadam. So uh, before the Abhi Shekham, there's just one thing I'd like you all to do. I request that you all put your hands in the air and call out to Krishna with love. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! Hare Hare! Hare Rama! Hare Rama! Rama Rama!